I know this series is called Hidden Spirituality, but as many of you in the comments have pointed out, at some point, we have to be honest with ourselves and acknowledge that, especially with some of these movies, we really ought to name it Obvious Spirituality. And The Dark Crystal is definitely one of those films. Also, let it be known that this episode will specifically be exploring the original film of The Dark Crystal. We're not gonna be getting into the Netflix prequel series at this time, although I'm certain that it would make for some great content. And to that end, spoiler warning, but you knew that already, didn't you? So in essence, The Dark Crystal is basically an hour and a half long magical adventure through a world of mysticism, alchemy, and astrology in a world entirely different from our own and yet a beautiful reflection of our own inner consciousness. The story begins by describing that a thousand years ago, there was a planetary conjunction that brought about great change. The narrator describes that the great crystal cracked and a single shard was lost, creating chaos. This is a spiritual reference to our own collective consciousness and our relationship with the eternal oneness in the sense that we ourselves have been disconnected from the greater whole. It also seems to be subtly relating with the fall of Lucifer or the idea of a fallen consciousness. In the Bible, Lucifer was said to fall from heaven, becoming separate from the oneness and creating evil in the world. It is when the great crystal cracks and the shard is separated that the oneness becomes fragmented and two races appear, the Skeksis and the Uru, although the film simply refers to them as mystics. When this happened, the evil Skeksis took control of the crystal castle and this also relates to us today in that there are those in power who wield this power for evil or selfish purposes, which is the nature of the Skeksis. We also hear the line that the crystal hangs above a chasm of air and fire, both of which are alchemical forces relating with spiritual and mental energy. There is no water or emotional energy where the Skeksis are. There is, however, sacred geometry and other alchemy symbols all over the crystal castle. Now, it's only at the end it is revealed that the Skeksis and mystics were originally one species, the Urskek, these wise alien super beings who created a symbiotic relationship with the crystal, but that in their arrogance, they unwittingly caused the crystal to crack, splitting themselves into two lesser states, the Skeksis and the mystics. This is a Kabbalistic lesson in the tree of life too, for the Urskek represent the path of harmony aligned on the middle of the tree, balanced between both sides and who in making a mistake on their journey caused them to polarize to an extreme on the left and right hand path, the path of severity and the path of mercy. The Skeksis became the path of severity, becoming cruel, intense, sharp, and violent. And the mystics became the path of mercy who live in a dream of natural peace, rehearsing the old rituals with forgetfulness and the ancient wisdom is almost lost. Another way of looking at these races, however, is as two aspects of ourselves. The Skeksis are our lower self, such as relating with the reptile brain, the survival-based fear-driven mentality that compels us to act in selfish and cruel ways to one another, where the mystics are our higher selves, but who are often so gentle and soft that it's nearly impossible to hear or understand what's really going on with them. Thus, when they are harmonized as the Urskek, they describe a unified being, the higher and lower selves united in the heart. However, we also must acknowledge that since they are two sides of the greater whole, there are qualities of Skeksis that are actually not bad. Qualities like sharpness, passionate intensity, or generally being opportunists. These are qualities that do value in the world, such as mental sharpness or passionately being engaged in something meaningful. However, the challenge with the Skeksis is that these qualities are all paired with cruelty. And likewise with the mystics, while we do look at them as the good guys, and certainly they are, they are slow and forgetful. And they don't care much for anything other than just doing their rituals, even though they have mostly forgotten them at this point. The beautiful lesson here is that truth and wisdom come when the darkness and the light dissolve into one. Now, the dark crystal also speaks to us in another way, reminding us of our place in the world and society right now, in that we are in a time of great change, the narrator explains at the beginning that the time of testing has come, for it is time for the world to heal or to pass into a never ending realm of darkness. This is explored by the nature of prophecy and how prophecy comes about at all. You see, through the character named Agra, the dark crystal explains that by understanding the movements of the celestial bodies, 
they can see patterns and cycles that reflect events that take place on the planet. And that a thousand years ago, there was a conjunction of the three suns. And that when it happens again in another thousand years, we would pass into either a time of healing or never ending darkness, depending on the outcome of the events. Agra elaborates by explaining that the conjunction simply means a time of change. Sometimes things get better, sometimes they get worse. It's not that the astrology determines these things, simply that it is a reflection of times of transformation, cycles, and the changes happening in the microcosm as well. When asked, Agra says, The great conjunction is the end of the world. Oh, the beginning? And begin all the same. I swear, she was probably this close to saying as above, so below before the Beetleborg rush in. I mean, that's what they're called, right? Now on another level, this movie is just riddled with truth bombs in just the best way. And sometimes these lines are so fast that you only catch them if you're really paying attention. For example, when Jen first meets Agra, Agra asks, Who sent you? My master, wisest of the mystics. Where is he? Around here? He's dead. Could be anywhere then. Honestly, in the moment, it's actually a really funny line. Yet it really aligns with so many ancient wisdom teachings that says when we die, our consciousness and the energy of our being merges with everything and can move freely throughout existence. But the best, most deepest truth bomb in this movie, and honestly, in the running for the deepest truth bomb in any movie ever, is this one. <laughs> they just ohm in their faces. <laughs> and the guys are like, nope, <laughs> this move is, it's so good. And yet, Ohm is the sound of creation. And so this powerful vibration just brings anyone to a standstill and moves aside and surrenders to the supreme power of that immaculate sound. Now, of course, this movie revolves around the characters, Jen and Kira, who go on the adventure to restore the shard to the dark crystal. We also discover along the way that when they touch, they engage in a telepathic connection of sharing their memories which they call dream fasting. And while their experience was very deep and visual, we do see this happening in subtle ways on earth too. When two people who share a deep soul connection with each other, they sometimes feel as though they've known each other all their lives or have this deep intuitive and seemingly psychic connection with each other. Now throughout the film, there's a bunch of adventure and drama and what have you, but let's laser in on the ending now for a moment. Jen restores the crystal and the mystics and Skeksis merge together. However, Kira has been killed in the process and she lay there fallen in Jen's arms. And once again, we have another deep and profound truth bomb. The newly restored Urskeks say to Jen, Hold her to you. She is part of you as we all are part of each other. Boom. I mean, does that even need elaboration? Well, in case it does, scientifically today, we can actually identify that all of us are a part of the same quantum energy field that makes up all things, and that our energy is intimately intertwined and connected. And at this energetic level, there is no separation between us, even if we feel that there is. Further, this scene demonstrates the power of love to create and build those connections, because it is through the wisdom of the Urskeks and the love of Jen that restores Kira to life. Finally, our last truth bomb, the Urskeks leave us with the restored crystal of truth, and they remind us very clearly to make your world in its light. This is a powerful lesson and a reminder for us all that we must learn to embody the light of truth and make the world with the wisdom we gain from its glory. The deeper that you connect with the spiritual essence of all things, the deeper you know truth and the more you can share that with the world. <laughs>